this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run TV, uh, produced by the Shoe Addicts. Uh, Friday night at Hayward Field. Friday night at Hayward Field was started in 2010-2011 um, as a second, actually a pre-night to the pre-classic. And the first year they did it, Moses Mosop ran a world record for the 25K and 30K. And it was a great night for track geeks. And then they added things on. They brought in some of the jumps. They brought in a hammer throw. They brought in some kids' events. Where it's gone the last three years has been 10,000 meter for men, 5,000 meter for women, long jump for women, 800 for women, discus for women, shot for men. It's a nice combination of events. It gives you two hours of track and it's free on a Friday night. And the weather gods were perfect this year. It was just a great evening. You had uh, um, Pavel Fajek, I almost got to screw that name up, from Poland, who threw 80-28 in the hammer throw, uh, the world leader, and he was quite happy. He had taken him 28 hours to travel the lovely Eugene, Oregon from Poland. So what did he do to celebrate? He went home and took a nap. But uh, he did have the world leading throw, and let's see what he does uh, later in the year. In the long jump, it was Brittany Reese and Ivana Spanovic. You remember them from the World Indoor Champs, where they went 1-2. Well, same positions here, uh, shorter jumps. Uh, only 692 was the winning jump for Brittany Reese. But Brittany had two falls, as did Ivana Spanovic. Brittany's uh, last foul was about 715. Big jumps. But here's the thing to remember. When Catherine Mary, you remember her, the bronze medalist from 2000, the 400. But when she asked Brittany Reese what it's going to take for Brittany to defend in Rio, Brittany said 7.45. Now, curious observers will know that that's just at the American record and the world record of 7.49. These are serious jumps. Brittany Reese is a serious jumper who has a basketball background and takes all that swoosh and jumping and makes it work in the long jump. Brittany's one of my favorite jumpers to watch because she's one of those performers who can do it at the end of a competition. So let's watch her this summer. Um, we also had a women's 800 that was pretty decent. Elisa Montano run, won that in 2 minutes, uh, 0.78. Um, we had Sandra Perkovic winning the discus in a monster throw, 224.11, uh, 68.56 for you people who know what metric means. And in the women's 5,000, Helen O'Beary took off like a bat out of hell and didn't stop. She ran 14.32.02. Helen reminds me of the late Ron Clark. She's a front runner. She goes out there and she busts her moves. She looked fantastic and she won the race with a very tough field. In 11th place was Molly Huddle, who ran 14.48.14, just uh, six seconds off her American record. Look for Molly to break that 5,000 record uh, later this summer, but most of all, look for Molly to be in the hunt for an Olympic medal in the 10,000. The big event on Friday night was the men's 10,000. And Mo Farah comes into these things to run fast times when the truth is it's all about the win. Any time that Mo runs, there's 12 to 14 kids from Eritrea, from Ethiopia, and from Kenya, and from Uganda who want to do one thing, beat the best distance runner in the world. Um, he had, Mo had company up until almost nine kilometers when the young gentleman who was the bronze medalist in the 2014 World Juniors fell back. But with 250 to go, William Sitonik went by him. And Mo's like, who is this? What is this guy doing? With 100 meters to go, Mo wound it up and took the guy apart with about 75 meters to go and won in 26.53.1. So Mo has the fastest time in the world going into Rio. He has a great win, and my prediction is it's going to be hard to beat him in Rio. For Run Blog Run TV, this is Larry Eater signing off for Friday night at Hayward Field. <laughs>